Hello, parents and students. This is your McFadder Technical High School update for Monday, October 5th. I am Jeanette Johnson, your director and principal, and with me as always, the assistant director supervising our high school, Mr. Daryl Harris. Hello there. Good afternoon. And our magnet coordinator, Ms. Lily DeCastro. Hi, happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. And I did want to mention for us to be bringing you this video on a Monday. We didn't do our normal end of the week Thursday evening video like we normally do only because so many things were changing late last week as a result of the emergency board meeting. So we wanted to wait until all of that finalized to be able to give you some definitive information. So uh, we thank you for your patience as we delayed posting this video until today. So we do want to spend this week's message talking about the return to campus procedures for those who have opted to do so as well as to talk a little bit about scheduling as it will affect everyone. So we're gonna start there, and we wanted to be sure you all are aware of exactly what the schedule will be. There's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of confusion around what the dates are, what they aren't, who's, who's reporting to campus when, and so on. So we wanted to make sure that we gave that information now that those decisions have been definitively made by the school board. So let's go through those uh, one day at a time, and we'll start with this week. Today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, no change for anyone. School starts at 8.30 as it's been doing since August. This Thursday, October 8th, is a planning day. That's new, it wasn't previously scheduled, but the district is providing a planning day so that our teachers who need to get onto campus and get their rooms ready for return to campus have the time to do that. So students, you won't have classes this Thursday. I'm sure you're disappointed to hear that, okay? That's for everybody. Then on Friday, October 9th, we do have class school for everybody. It is still remote for all of our technical high school students. But the one thing that does change, and again, this changes for everyone, is that starting this Friday, we will revert back to the school hours we have always had in prior years. In other words, a school start time of 9.15 and a dismissal time of 4.10. So that will start and will be for everyone, whether you're a remote student or an on-campus student, that starts this Friday. So those are the things to note for this week. Now, next week, on Monday the 12th, all of our technical high school students are still learning from home, but it is an early release day. That's also new. So now you're learning from home with a 915 start time, but it will be an early release day. So you'll you'll finish your school day two hours earlier than usual. You'll finish at that's Monday the 12th. OK, on Tuesday the 13th, our ninth grade students who selected a return to on-campus instruction have the opportunity to report to campus. So that's their first opportunity to attend on campus, Tuesday the 13th. All of our other technical high school students still remain at home. And the 13th is a full school day, 9.15 to 4.10 for everyone. On Wednesday the 14th, uh, ninth graders who have returned to campus do so again, Ninth graders who are still learning from home stay at home. All of our 10th through 12th graders still remain at home. The 14th, however, is an early release day again. So you've got two early release days so far, the 12th and the 14th, Monday and Wednesday, with a 2:10 dismissal time. On Thursday, the 15th, that's the date that our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders who are returning to campus for on-campus instruction will do so again with the 9:15 start time. It's a full day, regular day for all students. Then on Friday the 16th, we have another early release day for all students. And then Monday the 19th, an employee planning day for all students. Now don't worry, all of this information will be on our website. It'll be social out via social media. Ms. DeCastro will put it, put it out as well. But just to state it again, all students, a planning day this week on the 8th, Early release days next week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the, Tuesday, the 12th, 14th, and 16th, and a planning day on the 19th. The physical return to campus begins on the 13th for our ninth graders and the 15th for our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. 
Now, I do want to emphasize, however, that that return to campus is only for those high school students who either submitted the district survey by the 29th or emailed Ms. Castro directly to indicate their preference and received a confirmation from her. All other students should not be returning to campus at this time. You are remaining in remote learning for the time being, most likely through the end of January. If you have any questions about that or any confusion at all, please contact any one of the three of us so that we can clear that up for you. So with that said, uh, with the return to campus, it means addressing some logistics that normally we handle in August, but they aren't things you handle when you're not meeting on, on campus physically. So for that, I want to start by asking Ms. Castro to talk about the transportation arrangements for our students who have opted to return for on-campus instruction. Ms. Castro. Thank you. Um, transportation is a thing that does take a little bit of time at the beginning of the school year. So this is our beginning. Um, any student who completed the survey through single sign-on is expected to have um, a link in virtual counselor to indicate their transportation information. Um, we do not have any of the information yet. Um, the district has just started routing those students. Um, they expect to have it in by the beginning of next week at the latest for ninth graders. Um, but any student who indicated to me either by the survey or by direct email that they wish to come, um, there's no guarantee that for the first two to three weeks that there will be a bus ready for them, but they can check in on virtual counselor daily to see if that information is there. As soon as we get more um, up to date info, we will definitely get that back to the parents. But right now that is what transportation is telling us. I was in a meeting this morning about it. So let me make sure I understand. If a student or parent completed the survey, the online survey by the 29th, we do expect they'll have transportation assigned to them. Correct. If they completed the survey late or notified us via an email to you, then they are likely not to have transportation for the first couple of weeks. And in either case, they can confirm that by watching virtual counselor. Did yeah. I get that right? It is true. Um, and even if they emailed us early that they couldn't get into the survey, um, because we did get some notification even on the 30th and um, it was a download that was done by the district and though we notified them immediately, they were two separate actions. So they're not promising us all of that will be done, but we're going to um, make accommodations where we can for students, you know, let us know there's no bus and we will make a note for the fact that you might need to continue e-learning at home for a couple more days. So we don't mark them absent. So. We'll, when you say let us know, if the, if they find that they have not been assigned transportation or have concerns or questions about transportation, although we don't control the transportation assignments, who on our campus should they be reaching out to for those kinds of questions or concerns? Um, either Ingrid Madu, I-N-G-R-I-D dot M-A-D-O-O -O at BarwardSchools.com um, about the, the bus itself. And to say that a student is absent because they don't have a bus, they would go to our high school webpage and report an absence um, there so that we don't make them an excuse because they could still attend um, school virtually. Um, but students who don't come to school are going to lose their spot according to the district otherwise. So we want to make sure we have information to hold on that for them if it's a, a transportation glitch. Perfect, thank you. You're the welcome. other major thing that happens when school is in session physically, <coughs> that doesn't happen when school is in session in a remote environment, is the issue around school breakfast and school lunch. And Mr. Castro, I know you have some information for us about those two items as well. Yes, um, Broward County Public Schools is going to continue their go lunches and breakfast, um, but now they will occur on our campus. So we are going to send out updated information on how to request um, food to be here for each student. This year, we're not going to have the choices we've had in the past. It's going to, uh, we will do a Kia survey where we'll send that information out as well um, next week because it's a little early yet. They haven't decided what they're serving, but each day the student would report whether they want our lunch um, or don't want our lunch versus in the past where they had choices. So um, anybody who pre-orders will have food ready for them at lunchtime um, in our uh, outside of, on the outside area of camp 
I can't think of what it's called. I've lost the word in the Piazza, by the La Piazza area, but not in the pay line in the um for the traditional school lunch lines. So. Okay, traditional school breakfast and traditional school lunch free for all students as it has been up till now. Uh, at this point, for now, right at the start, we don't anticipate opening any of our McFadder lines. We've mentioned that to you in the past. Uh, we'll, we'll adjust that as needed. And I wanted to make sure there was one clarification. You mentioned that, you know, you've, the, the school district has been doing the go breakfast and lunches um, since March when the school district went into remote learning and you mentioned that they'll continue to do it, it will be occurring on campus. I want to make sure parents realize it will occur on campus for our students who are who are uh, reporting for remote instruction for for on campus instruction for our students who are still doing remote instruction. Those parents and students can continue to pick up grab and grow grab and go breakfast and lunch packets from the school sites where they've been going. McFadder isn't doing that kind of pickup. It's doing the uh, issuing the grab and go lunches for students who are here physically on campus. Did yeah. I word that under, understandably? Yes, and that and I, I appreciate you clarifying that because literally they are not going to be bringing us any more food um, because it comes from Indian Ridge than the people who check the box for that day and say yes, um, they wish to have food provided for them on campus and only the students who are expected through e-learning at school will receive that link. So it is very important students who are students who are still continuing to work remotely. You'll keep doing what you've done all along, which is if you want to pick up breakfast or lunches, you'll go to the local schools that you've been going to to pick those up rather than coming here to McFadder. For those of you who are coming to campus, though, basically think about what Mr. Castro said. It's going to be really important that you either bring your own lunch daily or check that box so that Indian Ridge knows us to send knows to send a breakfast and a lunch for you when they bring the food over. Uh, a few other logistics that we wanted to talk about related to again students who will be, who'll be returning for on campus instruction around things you might need to consider or bring with you as you return. Uh, I know Mr. Harris had several items in that um, in that area that he wanted to talk about. OK, yes, and uh, just a couple of things in Ms. Johnson and uh, Mr. Castro. I just have one question to on the last thing that we were speaking about uh, regarding the uh, breakfast and lunch. We want to make sure if students have not applied for free or, or reduced lunch, is that meal? Are those meals available to all students? All students in Broward County Public Schools okay, um, just, are eligible, right. at least for the time being. I don't okay. know how long that will continue. OK, but thank you just for that months, clarification. Thank you. thank you. So um, as we for those students that are de uh, deciding also to to come back to on campus learning, um, it's an interesting time. Uh, one thing that's taking place in the middle of all of this is actually exam week is actually taking place at the same time. So exams, uh, our midterm exams are October the 13th through the 16th. It's October the 13th through the 16th. Um, some of you may have already decided to exempt your exams. If you decide to exempt your exams and you have no reason to come on campus, I really encourage you to actually stay home because you won't have anything to do because you won't be taking an actual exam. So uh, make sure you uh, clarify that with your teachers. Make sure you know if you're being exempted from an exam or not. But exams are October the 13th through the 16th. And only the students that really are taking exams should be the students that should come on campus. OK, let me let me clarify as well. So the students who are continuing to work remotely will take their exams remotely. You don't need okay. to come on campus to take your midterm exam. What you just talked about is referring to the students who have who have scheduled to return to campus. Correct. And how that will work. And I know we did want to, and so we're leaving it up to students. The students who are scheduled for, for on-campus instruction may either stay at home to take their exams and start coming to school when their exams are done. Correct. Or they can come on campus as of the 13th or the 15th to take their exams, but we did want to caution them about that because of the issue around transportation. Could you speak to that for a second? And our students who've been with us before know how transportation is at the beginning of the year. We wanted to be sure people were aware of that concern. 
Yes, and with transportation, eventually all of you will get used to it, especially for our new students. You will get used to transportation, but this is new. This is like actually like the beginning of the year for our bus drivers. So there will be some challenges and some there may be some late times that buses may come or pick students up. So that's one of the reasons that if you uh, have an opportunity to stay at home and take your exam, uh, it would be uh, the best option to do that. So you don't have to deal with the challenges of transportation, getting to class on time or walking into your exam late and just adding some additional stress that you probably don't want at this particular time. So this is one of the challenges we'll probably have and that all will eventually get ironed out. But this, as I mentioned, this is exam week the 13th through the 16th. So uh, there'll be a few challenges and hopefully we'll get that all ironed out pretty quickly. Absolutely. We always tell our new students and our parents and parents and our returning students and parents know this, that every year at the beginning of the year, and for all practical purposes, this is a beginning of the year for some of these logistics. Transportation is a problem for many students for the first week or two. Buses, buses haven't learned their routes yet, things are late. So we just wanted you, you aware of that. If you are planning to get to school by bus, you might take that into consideration along with your exam schedule as to which day you decide to start reporting back physically to campus. Now, once they do report, there are some issues around items they might need to bring with them. And I know you, Mr. Harris, you were going to update us on that. Yes, so in addition, um to the exams. Also, once you, for those students that are returning, uh, coming on campus for the on-campus learning, uh, please speak with your uh, instructors, your teachers, to verify if you need to bring your textbooks with you to class. Uh, when you come on campus. Um, they may ask, they may update you on a weekly basis that you need to bring a book this week or not, but you know, just make sure that you clarify if you need to bring your textbooks with you to class. Another important thing you, which you've been using every day since we've been doing the uh, e-learning is your laptop. So you really need to bring your laptop with you and headphones because you there will be a few of the students probably in the classroom with you. So we will have to use headphones at all times. So your laptop, headphones, and your textbook. So make sure those three things are on your list that you check and bring those with you every day so you can have the best opportunity to learn everything that you need. OK, great. Thank you. Now we will have and we've mentioned this in the past. Access to a small number of laptop devices as well as a small number of headsets for students who don't have their own. But for those who have them, it would really be helpful that they bring those on a regular daily basis, those of you who are rep reporting to campus. Then the last thing I wanted to mention this week is we wanted to talk a little bit about what the experience will be like here on campus. So the first thing to know is that your first day back physically on campus, those of you who are returning, you will be greeted upon arrival out at the mall by a member of our staff. Um, they'll say hi, they'll make sure they, that you've confirmed what your schedule is, that you have what you need for the day, whether it's the laptop, the headphones, et cetera, and they'll let you know where to go for each of your classes. Now, some of you may be saying, I already know where to go for my class for my classes because I know where, where my classroom numbers are. Maybe you know that, maybe you don't. We want to be sure we help you with that. But the other thing that will be happening is that although you are returning to campus at this time, some of your teachers are not. Some of your teachers, due to their situations, are going to be continuing to teach remotely. So you may be reporting to your regular classroom. Let's say you have Miss Johnson as a teacher, but Miss Johnson is teaching remotely. You might be reporting to Miss Johnson's classroom where you will learn remotely from her with a different adult in the room supervising to make sure everything goes smoothly or you may be asked to go to a different classroom. So that's why you're gonna be greeted by a member of our staff. So they'll make sure you know everything you need to know about where to go each period of the day and to make sure that you have everything you need in order to be successful. The other thing we wanted to reiterate for the uh, peace of mind of all of our students and their parents is that we do have and will have on campus a full-time school nurse, where not only do we have our clinic, we will have a separate isolation room so that if we have any students throughout the day who begin to experience symptoms of illness that, that we're concerned or that they're concerned might be cases of potential COVID, those students will be escorted to the isolation room where they can be checked out by the nurse and where they can be kept safely in isolation from others so that we're protecting the health and safety of all of our students. So we did want you to know, you've probably heard about that from the district, but we wanted you to be aware that those resources are available. So we have been preparing the campus. We have signage, 
We have um, health and safety supplies. We have the isolation room. We have the plan for where each of you will go each day. And we're looking forward to welcoming you back, those of you who are returning to campus at this time. Um, as always, if you have any questions about anything we've talked about here, you can let us know by reaching out to one of the three of us, reaching out to us on social media, whatever, whatever the case may be. Mr. Harris, Ms. DeCastro, did I miss anything that we wanted to talk about this week? Just excited to see uh, a lot of new eyes um, in the next few days. And um, we are being very conscious of how many people are in each classroom. So even though we might have moved um, a couple of students because of a teacher um, not physically being in the room that day, we're not just putting 100 people into any one space either. So I want to reassure parents that each room space is is um, individual based on the square footage and correct if i'm not mistaken i think the max capacity of 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 our largest classroom where we have students um, who will be learning i believe is nine so um i think the class the class sizes of the on-campus face-to-face instruction range from one or two students per period per classroom up to as many as nine. Um, and again, we continue to limit that so that we can make sure that we maintain the six foot social distance from, from one another at all times. And we do anticipate doing our usual end of the week uh, message later this week. Um, we, we'll give you a few more details, a few more reminders about back to school. Uh, for those of you who will be returning remotely, but we did since we missed last week, we wanted to get this one out to you here at the beginning of the week so that you were aware of the change in schedule and how things proceed from here on out. And I just and before we sign out and like sign off, I just wanted to say on behalf of the three of us and the entire McFad McFadder family to all of you, our students and our parents, we just really want to thank you for your patience, for your understanding, and more than anything for your trust in us that we'll keep you safe, we'll protect your students and uh, continue to have you learn uh, and have you prepared the best that you possibly can be. So thank you so much for allowing us to take care of you. Absolutely. And with that, I think we will sign off for the week until later in the week. Again, this week you'll get two. You didn't get any message last week, you'll get two this week. So we will talk to you later this week. Mr. Harris, Mr. Castro, have a great afternoon. All Thank right, you. take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye.